Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I want us to, we, we started something on what makes us an enemy of God, but there's something I want us to consider right now. We'll consider that very briefly and um, see how we can go about it. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 12. It came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayers. It came to pass, he went to a mountain to pray and continued all night. So we want to consider maybe for a month the power of night vigils. We want to consider that so that by the time we'll be done, that, that divine empowerment to wake up at night will be transferred to you. We must understand something that life is all about God. Hmm? It's all about God. All about God. It's when you understand the secrets of God's operation. It's not about what you can do for yourself. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 9. For by strength shall no man prevail. No one can do by yourself. Paul said in First um, Corinthians 15 verse 10. I am what I am by the grace of God. So whatever you become in life, whatever you achieve, is all about God. It's all about God. Popular verse of scripture, Zechariah 4 verse 6. Not by power, not by mind, but by the spirit of the Lord. So it's, it's not your strength. But the truth is, in as much as it's all about God, why is everybody not blessed? If life is just all about God, then God should favor everybody. It should, be, it should show his equality. Acts chapter 10 verse 34 says there's no respect of persons with God. So it should show his equality to everyone. It should just be fair to everybody. Ephesians 6, 9. Colossians 3, 25. God is no respecter of persons. Romans chapter 12 verse 10 says there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So why is God not just fair to everybody? Second Chronicles 19 verse 7 tells us three things God cannot do. God cannot take gifts, which is like bribe. God has no part in iniquity and there's no respect of persons with him. I think the same thing was said. So, if you study the Bible back to back, you'll discover that God is no respect of persons. So, he's supposed to just spread that favor, that prosperity on everybody. Why is he not doing that for everyone it's because only those how many of you know that even if you are given a brand new car and given the key and the door is open you can be there for life until you get in and turn on the ignition and it become worse when you do not know how to drive there are people who have been given cars and for one month people are driving them two months people are driving them that that boldness some people are just scared so what am I saying? In as much as God is merciful, there are principles that you understand and you trigger God's favor. You trigger God's opportunity. You trigger open door. Jesus had a specialty. One of the supernatural strengths, one of the, the, the avenues Jesus drew supernatural strength was praying at night. When the disciples are they've gone to bed, Jesus will go at night to pray. And every believer must understand this because what helps you to operate a practice and you do it excitedly is when you have the revelation of that practice. There are people you don't tell them giving. They give with their life because there's a revelation on giving that they possess. People struggle with obedience where revelation is not in view. Obedience becomes easy when revelation. That is why you don't tell people to fear God. When the revelation of heaven and hell hits them, they'll fear him. So as it is, we need to understand. So many people take the night casually. They take the night very casual. How do you think sometimes God wake you up by two? It's not, it's not coincidental. Not as if you slept early. Some people will sleep 12 and still wake two. And the wake to and the sleep leaves them. God woke you up to prayer. You are saying, I, I can't sleep. Are you not ashamed of yourself? 
God woke you up to pray. God woke you up to pray. And you are complaining. In fact, you are not sleeping. It's not a prayer point. Meanwhile, God is the one that woke you up. For three nights now, you can't sleep. Because God woke you up to pray. So what God woke you up to do, in fact, you are not, it's not a prayer point that you can't sleep. You are praying against the man who woke you up. God woke you up to pray. Now at night you cannot sleep. So it has become a prayer point. Oh God, give me sleep. God says no. There's a sleep of death. Psalm 13 verse 3. There's a sleep of death. Consider hear me. Lighten my eyes lest I sleep the sleep of death. The sleep you sleep when God wakes you up to pray is a sleep of death. God woke you up to pray. You are looking for sleep. It's not coming. God, God, there are some matters he wants you to address. That's why he woke you up. But no. In fact, you have gone to buy a tablet now. You now take the tablet. You took two. It didn't work. You took three. It didn't work. You took four. It didn't work. God said, no, you won't sleep. Handle this in prayer. But no. We like to sleep. Some sleep in the day. Sleep at noon. Sleep in the... Abba. So God, you know... You, the night is open to everybody. In Acts chapter 20, Paul was preaching at night. There was a young man called Eutychus. He sat on the window. If you read from verse 7 to verse 9 in Acts chapter 20, Paul was preaching. And the man, guy, sat on the window and was listening to Paul. Paul preached from morning to night. I've not done that here. You are complaining. I spent time. Paul preached morning. He started his sermon in the morning, 9 a.m. And 12 midnight, Paul was still preaching. Okay. Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples... Is this a Bible study? Okay. Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart, and continue his speech to what? To what? Midnight! Paul, they woke up in the morning, Paul gathered and began to preach, preach, preach. People were so hungry for God, hungry for revelations, they refused to go. Till midnight. Because Paul knew there was power in the night. Now, the enemy also knows that there is power in the night. So, he targets people who are careless with the night. Go to verse 8. And there were many lights in the upper chamber. And we had to were gathered together. Verse 9. And there sat... Now, the word you term is fortunate, privileged, and favored. Being falling into a deep sleep. The night, a time to be strategic. This guy was sleeping. As Paul was long preaching. So long preaching is not a crime. <laughs> Some of you are complaining. On Sunday, oh, I'm going to close, close early. This is a revelation. And he sunk down with sleep. And fell from the third loft. And was taken up dead. Verse 10. And Paul went down and fell on him, embracing him. Trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. Verse 11. And when he was come up again, they broke bread and talked a long while. The guy died. Paul brought him back to life and continued the service. He continued. <laughs> it's after he brought him back, he talked a long while, even to the breaking of the day. So, we was an opportunity people were getting revelation someone else was casual and death came from the third floor so don't play with your night i'm trying to show you we all have the same opportunities in life that's the truth opportunity doesn't come but once it's a lie opportunity keeps coming but it is how you maximize your opportunity that determines your success Everybody has opportunity. Don't let nobody tell you opportunity comes but once. Opportunity comes every day. But people don't maximize the opportunity. Because of the power of sleep. Sleep has excess sleep has ruined people. Excess sleep. Some people can stand and sleep and they will fall. They will stand like this and fall asleep. And they will maintain balance. The worst will happen, they'll just. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 10, yet a little sleep, 
yet a little slumber yet a little folding on the hands to sleep verse 11 is very ironic very funny he says so shall that poverty not you so shall the person's poverty not you in jesus name so shall the poverty come as one that traveled the poverty will come like a poverty that has been on a journey he said and thy want as an armed man can i get the message translation let me see what he says about that message just this you can look forward no they can look forward to a dead poor life poverty your permanent house guest that when somebody sleeps too much poverty will become a poverty will get a guest room in his house and live there for free that shall not be your portion in jesus name so that's why when i will come to sometimes we do vigils in church we do fire night and some people it takes them two sundays to recover sunday they come they don't they don't come sometimes some sundays if they come to church they come very dull they sit somewhere just say what why are you like this fire night here they're dull and there are some people that finish that fire and they are still smart they sleep for two three hours and they have some other things to do and you think they have ten heads no it's because of the revelation there is something revelation brings supernatural strength when when you contact the revelation on something it gives you strength you draw strength from that revelation it gives you joy as i chapter as I chapter uh, uh chapter 12 verse 3 with joy shall we draw water from the wells of salvation there is joy that comes when you encounter certain truths so it's important that you begin to understand jesus this was one of his most aside fasting aside holiness this was his most strategic secret one hour prayers at night is stronger than six hour prayers in the day what will make a believer sleep from 10 till 7 is ironically demonic and then they now wake up you know morning devotions is good but sometimes when i see people doing morning devotion by seven in the morning i, I wonder what they are what they are binding what they are binding when have, heaven has closed from morning session witchcraft has closed from coven so what are you binding morning session heaven has closed coven witchcraft has finished the best time to, to handle a thief is in the act. When the thief is in the act. Amen. So you sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. If you are an Omega child and 4 a.m. you are still on the bed. Still sleeping. Something is wrong. I'm even saying 4. I'm not saying 1. I'm not saying 2. I'm just saying 4. I'm trying to be Libra. 4. 4.30. You would have finished praying before you now stand up and go for the devotion. No, but you sleep. You sleep. You sleep. You wake up you, you, to pee. You dreamt. You know, you, the dream caught. You went to pee. You came back. You continue. How can somebody caught? Have you heard people tell you that when I went back, the dream now continue? So I now continue the dream. If you want to sleep well if you want to enjoy rest in life when i mean sleep i'm talking of rest in life you want to enjoy rest in every era as a matter of fact you can write this down when you address your night you arrest your day when you address your night you arrest your day when you arrest your night you address your day amen okay i'll just run through this now praise the lord why why are they necessary you see when you haven't seen problems sometimes people don't understand when you get to a point where you still have people you can run to options no you are still have dependents you still have options you still have things you can depend on you won't know how to take life serious but when life faces you and you have no option no choice than to face life and give life all it's got nobody tells you to be serious with god 
nobody tells you to pray nobody tells you to study when i came to Awuchi, there was nobody that liked me all the pastors were against me everybody was waiting to just hear something bad has happened to me i had no choice i had to pray i had to fast i had to seek the face of god if you come to my house then from the from the um the down floor hearing, ra, ba, 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 bo, 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 upstairs ge, 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 ge. down here he go, go 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 you come here he gaba, gaba, gaba. everybody was mad we're like god where are you anywhere you are please come are you following me and even now in fact i am more serious now than i was then that's the truth that's the truth because there are many things committed many things committed to me now that i have to make sure don't go down but we see a level of oppression ecclesiastes 7 7 says oppression makes a wise man mad hey surely a gift to destroy the art can we get the, the, the amplified of the message of that let me see what the message says brutality stupefies even the wise and destroys the strongest heart brutality so why was jesus what were the intrigues what was that dynamic power that was laced and loaded into the night that jesus drew the jews from it he made when i finish there are some of you you'll be looking forward to the night if i you'll be looking forward so that you can address it in matter number one the ninth is strategic and is good if you need to make vital decisions if you are in a state of confusion who do i marry which business do i do what do i travel to there are issues in your life that are confusing you settle it at night if you read verse 13 of luke chapter 6 jesus did that video because he wanted to pick 12 disciples after the vigil when it was day he chose 12. there are choices you need to make in your life you settle them at night when you address them you leave them to god father lord there are six people in my in my life who want to marry me emeka is there chinoso joseph um louis <laughs> um paul peter six of them Lord, who do I get married to? Lord, just, just. You address all of that. You leave that before God. You call their name next to you. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. Issues that are confusing. You don't pray, you understand it. Just mention it, then switch. Who do I, Lord? What are you saying? At night, you are praying. The heavens are open. When it's day. By the spirit of illumination something will drop in your spirit either by manifestation from the person who the lord has ordained or by a rebuke or by a confirmation it will be said to jesus now look at this jesus prayed all night to choose 12 and yet he chose judas what if he didn't pray he would have chosen 12 judases you are you are you are not confused you are just prayerless you are not confused you are prayerless there are decisions i am never i've been married to my wife for a while i've never sat down one day say ah, i'm confused no i just target it at night i pray through the night i ask god about it i ask the lord about it sometimes it won't come sometimes as I, after that prayer as i lay my back to rest in between a short message will just come are you following me a short revelation bam i'll just see something see something then I said, I'll not put two and two. See, see, see. Hey, hey, hey. Sometimes I want to shout. That's the answer. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, somebody just calls me. Hey. He says, see, 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 see. The answer comes. Some of you go to bed. You have confusion or confusion. You carry your confusion. You slept on top of the confusion. Then you woke up, your mouth with more confusion. I never seen no way to be one do this God. <laughs> <laughs> choice how many of you know your de the decisions you make today the decision you make today is what makes you tomorrow life is full of decisions to marry you have to make a choice you have to stay you have to make a choice how to live you have to make a choice even what you are wearing now was a decision am i correct 
nobody has a problem nobody in life has a problem people only have a decision to make oh i don't know should i should I, what do i do now what do i do should i go there or go here it's a problem it's a function of decision sit down it's a function of decision there's no problem in life there is only a decision to make now you can only make that decision so when i see christians who are saying they are confused despite all these spiritual asanas at the disposal i'm worried there are critical decisions set too late at night your marriage is in crisis your husband is doing something let him sleep go to a corner wake up in the room call his name don't carry his picture before you wake up and see you with his picture you will explain they will call you in the village for family meeting because when i talk now some of you want to do it <laughs> someone wants to overdo it actually yeah they want to overdo it they will not, not carry his picture carry a bottle of oil we are white yeah how about this now <laughs> Because that's the problem with the church. They always overdo what their pastor tells them. You know, I carry oil, carry everything, wake up, now stand in front of the man like this. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> you, know, you look like those demons in Mazion films. You know? <laughs> Alright, so, you address that before the Lord. Now, there are houses where they don't like people to shout. Are you aware? The Bible says in Proverbs, commune with the Lord on your beds you don't have to shout come to church shout scream nobody's going to stop you when you get back to that place you have to don't shout commune there's a way you can hear somebody it is not shouting but it's praying for hours he's there somebody say papa no 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 i want to charge <laughs> see, when i pray like that it doesn't flow but when i get boo they get ah! Build your house, build your own house. You know, someone said, someone said, someone said to me, said the landlord, blah blah blah, the, 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 the landlord is evil, that is his prayer that is firing the landlord, that the landlord said, I said, shut up, shut up. <laughs> noise is bad, noise, noise. Some people cannot cope with noise. He said, Papa, I don't understand. My landlord is demonic. When I start by one, Gaba, Gaba, I'll face his window. Gaba, I said, ah, why? Build your house or come to the church. We have vigils here every time. Every day there's a vigil here. True of us. You come and just pray. It's important. You just pray. Okay? Papa and the house are there. They used to have 15 services every week. What do I mean? Monday, they, they, I would come morning prayer. 5 30, they meet in the morning, and evening there is a service. So Monday to Saturday six times two how many uh, morning prayer sunday morning main service sunday morning still school of wisdom sunday evening 15 times i used to attend all 15 services morning evening morning evening morning evening pray 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 morning prayer 5 30 every day people come to pray amen and we have 11 o'clock prayers here every day people don't come people don't come all right so when you have critical decisions to, to make what do you do what do you do address it and settle it at night table it before the lord table it as you table it before the lord you pray in the holy ghost father in the name of jesus there's an opportunity for me to go to america to study there's another opportunity for me, <laughs> me to go to lagos some of you will pray about that kind of thing <laughs> America, Lagos, Papa. Ah, ah. That's what you ah, Papa, Papa already know the will of God. Leave it. But I'm telling you, even in that kind of thing, the devil can deceive you. You can make a choice. There's an opportunity in America, an opportunity in Lagos. Father, what do I do? Spirit of God. Lemo Shata. Ikubaliza Dakrido Shate. You just go into the Holy Ghost. You'll be so shocked. The Lord will seize the one that is not his own. And do you know when you stop praying? Can I tell you to, to stop praying? Eh? It's not when you are tired though. When you have peace. Not when you are tired. Don't stop praying because you are tired. When you pray, pray, you have peace. So you can pray for six, seven hours and you are tired. Continue the prayer. Until you get to a point where there's this thing. <laughs> now, when I say peace, don't start generating it. <laughs> See, Papa, when you have peace. <clears throat> have peace.
<laughs> you know, there's a, there's a way people can now generate that peace. No, I mean the peace that just. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? You see, in, in our work with God, there are some things we can't teach. Only those who experience it will understand more. You pray to that point, there's this peace, you just start laughing. Sometimes you start worshiping God, tears comes out of your eyes. Hmm? I don't mean tears of regret or tears of pain. <laughs> or, or tears of depression. Yo, the key to my life. But these tears of worship, you are worshiping, you are excited, you are, you are actually happy. You understand what I'm saying? You are happy, you are not, you are not crying because of pain. But because of, you, you just pray to a point, there's this assurance that comes to you. When peace like a river, I turn that my way. And you are singing that with tears. You pray till you have peace. So when you have critical decisions to make, you sort them out in prayer. Okay, this is important. When you desire, you are craving to hear God. When you desire the voice of God, you settle lit at night. There is no man that is a night VG specialist that will not be in the prophetic. No man. If you are a VG specialist, you must hear, you get used to the voice of God. First Samuel 15, 11 and 16. First Samuel 15, 11 and 16. 11 and 16. If you just write that down, we can run through that now. Okay? So it's important that you know major issues in Israel came at night. You take you talk with audacity. Can we guess by 16 of 1st Samuel 11? You talk with a level of audacity when God has spoken to you at night. At night, God said to Samuel, Look at that. God said to Samuel, Samuel said unto Saul, Rather stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me when? In the morning, at noon. When? This night, he said, say, say, Saul, you want to hear from God? Say, yes, say, please, wait. <laughs> There's a particular time of the day I go to inquire. Wait. He went at night. There's, so, there's something about the night. The court of wickedness or place at night. That's why God always attends to men who are at work there. They generate tears. Deeping and endures. When? Psalm chapter 30 verse 6. But joy comes in the morning. So, so, when the devil wants to generate weeping, it makes people sleep away their future. So if you want to hear God, somewhere said, wait here, tonight, I'm going to seek the face of God, I'll come back. That devil, that family devil, that makes you sleep like a log of wood, that devil, that, that, that blows air condition to your eyes, when God wakes you up, the devil goes, hey, Talk me, sleep. Your window is locked. Everywhere is locked. Everywhere is locked. Yet you are getting fresh air. Who is blowing the breeze? Everywhere is locked. And you are getting fresh air. No light. But you are getting fresh air. Satan said, Don't put on your generator. I am here. And that's how you are sleeping. That devil of sleep dies today. Sleep is not a bad thing. If anything God gives to us made by nature, it's not bad, but when it's excessive and we understand the dimensions of how, how the enemy takes advantage of people. So at night, God spoke to somewhere expressly. 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 You want to hear the voice of God? You want to have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit? I'm telling you the truth. Do that for just one week. Do that for two weeks. Two weeks. You want to hear the voice of God and get used to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. When the Lord begins to talk to you, when you are entering the beginning stage of relating with the Holy Spirit, when the Lord starts talking with you, it gives you courage. That's how it starts. After praying for a long time, you can just hear a voice say it is well. It can come from inside of your spirit. It's well. It's well. It is done. Give me thanks. That's how it starts. After a while, I start telling you, go on the fast. Because how does it graduate when you obey? It increases. When you obey, it increases. When you obey, from there, it now comes here. <laughs> then you cannot stand and you can just hear the voice and you turn. I hear from God the way I'm talking now. That's how I hear from God. The way I'm talking now, like this, on my ears, I hear it. 
That's what Samuel said when he told Saul. He said, the Lord told me in my ears. But it starts in your spirit. When you are still a child, so you are confused. That's what the Bible says. For the spirit bear witness with our spirit. Have you prayed to a point, you just sense something and the thing happens. You say, I, when I was, feeling, I was feeling like this when I was praying. You are still a child. Bear witness. Witness. You are living by witness. But if you can stand and say, this is what God is saying. You are living by leading. For as many as are led are the sons. <laughs> Children live by witness. Sons live by leading. Romans 8, 14 and 16. Romans 8, 14 and 16. For as many as are led. Those who can say, uh, let me see what the message translation says about it. Shalomon Sagradia. God's spirit becomes. There are things to do and places to go. So there is an prompting. Has it happened to you? That sometimes you pray, you wanted to just go on the journey, something held you back. Maybe somebody who not left, they had an accident. I'm like, Jesus, Jesus. Ha! Ah. You're about to do something, and the Lord said, going, and as soon as you just left that place, maybe a bite, boom! Something just ran. You see what happened? See, I don't know, something just held. You are still saying something. Something. That's witness. You are not sure of it yet. You don't know if it's your spirit or the Holy Spirit. But when you get used to that voice and you understand it, it becomes leading. You can say, this is what God is saying. This is what God is saying. Okay, let, let's see, um, no, verse 16. Let's see the uh, message translation of verse 16. God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really are. For we know who he is and we know who we are, father and children. You know the voice of God. You get, you understand. It's like, at that point, when you become a son, you can't. Yeah, oh God. You, you, you know what God says. You know what God can say. My wife has been with me for about going to 23 years. There are things you tell my wife I said. She doesn't need to ask me. You say, my husband cannot say that. Do you understand? By reason of what? So nobody can come and cajole you. Somebody sent me a message today. He said, the Holy Spirit told me today, today, to come to your Bible school for free. Listen, no, listen. No, no, he said God, not the Holy Spirit. He said, God told me to come to your Bible school for free. Please give me the guideline on how to start. I replied him. I said, God cannot tell you to come for free because you are not the owner. The Spirit of God is not stupid. He should talk to me. What the Lord can tell you is to come to the Bible school. Then God will now talk to me, the owner of the Bible school, to give you a scholarship. Now, I say, you have not even entered Bible school. You are already confusing the owner with God said, don't come. Because that's the spirit of religion. You have not entered the Bible school. You are already telling, telling the owner of the school that God says it should be for free. And I've learned by experience I try my best not to give people things for free. Because most people giving things for free never value it. There's an entire... I don't give scholarship to Bible school. Never. Except by the Spirit of God. Very rare occasions. Because I discovered 90% of those who gave Bible school, when they became pastors... Sorry, gave scholarship, brother. When they became pastors, they came to me to give them money to pay for all. They came to me that, oh, see what's happening. To marry, they came to me. To do that. So I started it now. So I have to continue. Are you following what I'm saying? And when some people get level of favor, they become lazy. You don't get what I'm talking about. There are people who have, who have asked for money. Students in the Polytechnic, in the university, they've asked for money for school fees. Their parents already gave them. We gave them. They went to use that money to buy phone. Am I correct? To buy handset. And that is why you... I wish you could understand what I'm talking about. The things that you consider good, that your house help in your house. Eh? Take care of her. Love her. But don't let the house help feel that life is so easy. Because God want brought that person to you so you can train the person on how life is. But you made them feel that life is so easy and started giving them so much and by the time they got out of the real world, they discovered it was not so. So they have to do something wrong to balance up the life that you give them. The Lord told me one time, 
I've not told my wife this. I sat down before I was talking to the Holy Spirit. I said, why is it some people come around and they just end up being bad? You show them so much good, they end up being evil. And the Lord said to me, number one, not everybody. There are people that are good. They don't pay evil, them good. They don't pay evil with good. They are good. You see, but you meet wrong people, there'll be a problem. Say number two, you promoted them too fast. Too fast. You didn't allow them to go through the stair. Ladder has steps. It is called wrong. The wrong of the ladder. Are you following me? The wrong. How many of you know that ladders, the wrong of the ladder is not fashioned for you to rest on it? You take step. You take step. You take step. You take step. So there are people that God is trying to train in JS1. But they have not even finished first term of JS1. We have promoted them to SS2. So there's a problem. The Lord will speak to you. Number three. Can I round up with number three? Or I'll give you some more. You want some more? Are you sure? Number three. Vigils are important if you want a change of status. Vigils are important if you want a change of status. Genesis 32 from verse 22 to 24. Genesis 32, 22 to 24. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had verse 24 and jacob was left alone and there wrestled with him there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day if you want status to change you must engage in the ninth operations the enemy knows how powerful the ninth is robbers rob any time of the day but their specialty is at night. They rob any time of the day, especially Nigerian robbers. They rob any time of the day. You know. But especially at night. Especially around the dimensions of 1 a.m. That's where the robbers go out. 1. That's where they knock on the door. You are listening. If you see a robber by 3, you know the robber woke up late. If the robber comes to somebody's house by 3, that robber woke up late. He overslept. One o'clock, when they know the person is deep in sleep. <laughs> now some people say, ah, that time when sleep, they sweet. <laughs> so that time, that's when they come. Jacob! He was tired. Jacob, <laughs> I like Jacob. I like Jacob a lot. Jacob was somebody from the day he was born. He was problematic. From his bed, in his mother's womb, he was, they were twins. He was drawing his brother's leg. In the womb, the Bible says he held on to his heel, and that's why he refused to admit that Esau was older than him. Because as Esau was coming out, his hand was holding his leg. Oh, come now, that's how I came out. <laughs> so, live that kind of life, struggle from foundation, began to fend for himself, began to struggle all through. He got to a point he was tired. He deceived his brother, Laban deceived him, he was tired. He needed to settle the issue. He had acquired wives, acquired sons, acquired properties. He put everything aside. And at night, he began to wrestle. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and Jacob began to wrestle with him. So you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. Until the breaking of the day, read verse 25. Bring out verse 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the whole of Jacob's tie was out of joint. Where is your tie? Where is your tie? Your hips region. Now see that. He wrestled with him. Somebody say wrestle. You know what wrestle is? Huh? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'll, I'll come to that. I want to show you something Romans 8. I'll come to that. There's something called groanings that cannot be uttered. When you are groaning, you are wrestling the spirit. 
There's a point somebody prays to you. You just see them shouting, ah, ah, ah. That's groaning. I don't mean no much. Don't start go to your house and just wake up in the morning, ah, ah, ah. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Wait, but like I said, some things are taught, some things are caught, taught, caught. What I mean is, you pray. You have done two, three hours, four hours, and you are just ah, at that level. That's groaning. At that point, you are wrestling in the spirit. There is, there is a realm you are about to break into. There is a level of answer you are about to enter. So that's why there is a wrestle in the spirit. Okay. So the, the whole of Jacob's star was out of joint as he wrestled with him. There's something I'm looking for. The angel said, leave me for the day break it. I'm looking for that. Verse 26. Okay. He said, let me go. For what? For what? He said, I will not let you go unless. So if you understand the power of the ninth, you can take, listen to this word, you can take advantage of heaven's operations. You know the way you take advantage of something? You can capitalize and take advantage of heaven's operations and heaven's provision. He said, no! I won't let you go. Give me amplified on that verse 26. I won't let you go. And he said, let me go for the day is breaking. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing upon me. You want your status to change? You have complained and complained and complained. You have complained and complained. Why not you engage? Today is Tuesday. You begin that from this night before Sunday. Some of you will be on the altar testifying. Lord, bless me. I will not let you go. Keko tabali saka. Limo shaga gebade gabade yata. Ikwati sokomanta. I will not let you go. Many years ago, as a young man, I was coming back from evangelism and I kicked a stone and I felt pains on my toes. And naturally, growing up as a very restless person, I, I, I kept itching the toe, kept itching the toe. Pum, pum. And the side of the toe, there was a flesh that came out. I pulled it. You know what that means, right? Overnight. I couldn't even move. I was sitting to move. Now I started, it was not more there. I started feeling the pains down here. My whole body was in pain. One day, two days. On Saturday, I couldn't go for evangelism. I woke up Saturday night and I screamed. I said, Lord, it's a shame to you that this is happening to me. Now, me, because I'm not God, it was my restlessness. But it's my father. I said, Lord, it's a shame. I opened scriptures of healing. I began to read them. 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 Oh boy, as I was reading them, pain was increasing. No, because the more I shout, the more the leg would tell me, come on, shut up there. I will shout, shut up there. So it was a battle. I was reading them. And I heard a voice when I prayed to a point. I was sweating. I heard a voice that said, sit. We are not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. God knew that my moving about there was just gra gra. Pain was killing me. He says, sit. For by strength shall no man prevail. He said, don't move about. Sit. I had it. I sat down. He said, keep praying. I prayed and prayed. I was sweating. When I prayed to a point, he said, take a shower. I went. I took a shower. He said, sleep. I slept. I woke up. The leg reduced. Pume, pain. Gone. Why? I battled at night. So for people are carrying sickness now, it has now become a, like a property. Imagine, maybe they have a tablet they take every three hours. They even brought it to church. After praise, when praise and worship is going on, they are checking. If three hours, when it's three hours, they will go outside, carry the tablet. You want to take a tablet, it's like you are doing surgery. Then you now take, you still go out. No, how long are you going to carry that sickness? It's time to engage at night. To say, Father, you have a child whose life is messed up. It's time to engage at night. It's time to say, Father, God, no. I'm giving you destiny secrets. It's time to engage at night. Say, change my status. Make me the voice in my family. Change.
change my status. Be on your feet. We need to pray. I'm going to be, in most of our Bible studies and the Friday meetings, I'm going to be teaching you all of this. Who wants to change your status? Who wants to hear the voice of God? Who wants the power to make critical, sensitive decisions? Pray in the Holy Ghost first, wherever you are. Pray in the in Jesus name we are going to take two prayers more of you In the name of Jesus, in the name my, of father, Jesus. my Father, my Father, my Father, as I pray, as I pray, I receive grace, I receive grace from henceforth, from henceforth to maximize my night. To maximize Open my your night. mouth and turn into prayer. The power to pray at night. Lika to galika to galaga to galaga to raka to prega to prega to gaga gaga. Ita gaga gaga raga to gaga gaga. Ira gaga 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 raga gaga. Iya gaga gaga raga gaga gaga tiya dash. Kalesa kumba. Who <laughs> 
In Jesus name. All of these all of these opportunities who is on the keyboard? All of these opportunities that are open to us are opportunities that we would maximize. Don't forget what the Bible says that when the word of the Lord came in Matthew 13, was talking about the parable of the sower. You see, why men what? Why men what? An enemy came and took the world. Why men slept. So it's important that you understand. That the enemy works over time because it goes about 1 7 job 2 2 
first peter 5 8 he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he made the vow god asked him in job he said from going to and fro the earth so it's important that you are very alert and all of these prayers that you have prayed today will put on flesh amen i feel led by the spirit of god to release you into the night the power to maximize the night to make decent quality use profitable use of it it's hereby delivered into your hands Amen. that the holy ghost will give you enablement strength vigor vitality stamina Amen. And it will give you utterance in prayer. Amen. Zeal and zest and agility will overflow around your spirit. And also, the profiting will appear for all to see. Amen. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed today? How many of us want us to continue this? We'll continue, right? Okay. So on Friday, we'll go continue with it. On um, um, Tuesday, again, we'll continue. Amen. I said, Amen. Just get a seed. Let's just put a seal on that which you have received. Praise be the name of the Lord. All choir members. There's nothing like first auditorium. This is the only auditorium. The other is a tent. So this is the auditorium. So we'll be here. All choir members. Departments. Uh, It is well your seed is blessed in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name praise him praise him king of glory praise him praise jehovah hallelujah amen Praise Him, praise Him, King of Glory, praise Him, praise Jehovah, Hallelujah, Amen. Praise Him, praise Him, King of Glory, praise Him, praise Jehovah, Hallelujah, Amen. Praise Him, praise Him, King of Glory, praise Him. Yeah. 
hallelujah all activities remain the same during the week don't forget next week is what we are going to pray we pray our our life out the team is pray until something we will pray our life out let me tell you something the, the Corinthian church the church in Corinth the Bible said they came last in no gift what that means is that they had all the gifts of the spirit operating that's a church all the gifts of the spirit what I'm trying to do if you are very sensitive I'm trying to take your eyes away from problem and put them on following God that when you're in this place God told me when God called me he said your church is not going to be for babies so I find it hard to talk certain kind of things he said I send you to pastor ministers now many of you when people see your message notes they can't understand when you go when you go somewhere and somebody's preaching you are, you are is below what you so you are like mm. why because we are all ministers so we'll be praying and begin to prepare yourself to say ah this is what i'm supposed to do on wednesday no no you can't block me no you can't block me you can't block. keep all the days open because it's going to be serious it's month wednesday is starting in the morning when morning evening thursday morning evening friday morning evening so we're going to be having a time to pray it is well with you the lord keep you and prosper you cause his face to shine on you and give you peace in jesus name my head is a good head my life is a good one angels shall fight for me greatness on my side goodness shall follow me no matter what the matter is greater glory god bless you i am rich i am strong Famous. I'm the of the time has come for the gathering of sons to get recharged and revitalized. The church that cannot be despised is a church of testimonies. An to revival. Ah, There's a revival! Let's take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. International Ministers Conference October edition. Testimonies are the trademark of God's mandate. Apostle Jensen and Dr. Lizzie Suleiman. 28th through 30th October 2020. Ministers without blemish. Time 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. GMT plus one. Happening live at the International Worship Center, Omega Fire Ministries, Kilometer 132, Benin, Okenya, Abuja Expressway, Algeria.